Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. Today's video tour is of a tiny home like none other. Practically everything inside of this home is handmade, from the custom trailer to the whimsical loft ladders. The owners also used a ton of recycled materials, giving this home a magical personality. Everywhere you look, there's a story to be told. So with that, let's let Cass and Emma take us on a tour of their hand-built tiny home. Hello, I'm Cass, and this is Emma, and this is our tiny house. I built this tiny house starting about three years ago, worked on it on and off for three years, and today we're using it as our full-time residence. So building this tiny house was kind of a fickle process. It didn't really have to be, but because I wanted everything to be one-off and eccentric, and I wanted to pay for it up front the entire way through, it took a lot longer than it should have. I could have built it in about a year, a simple one, probably even less. But because I wanted it to be more of a piece of art when it was done, and I really wanted to take my time and make every single piece from hand, it ended up being a much more enjoyable process, but also a much longer process, about three years in time. So I'd say 90% of this house was completely hand built and about 10% of it was pieced together out of reclaimed stuff I found. We were able to do everything really, really cost effectively, but the labor was extreme. It was honestly built usually after work, which I don't get off till six and usually would start around eight after dinner. So I make dinner and he's like, I'm gonna go put the floors in. In my mind, I'm like, he's gonna put some floors in. I'll see him in a couple hours, whatever. I go to work, at the time I was going to work at like 7 a.m. I come downstairs and he's working. I'm like, when did you get up? He goes, I never went to bed. I'm like, are you okay? He goes, I'm, I'm about to go to sleep. What do you think? And it's just done, that was just done. And one night. It was not because I felt like I had to, it's because that's what I enjoy to do and I enjoy creating pieces that have wow factor to them and it is something I want to do. This tiny house was actually surprisingly affordable to build because I was able to construct my own chassis out of recycled steel. I constructed my own wall frames out of aluminum reclaimed box tube and used a lot of reject materials from mills. So I was able to build this for about $40,000, but the amount of labor that goes into that is absolutely uncalculatable. We started dating probably when he was a year into it and so I met this guy who had this project and I was like, what are you doing? Because it did not look like this <laughs> when we first started. When I saw the finished product, first reaction is this is a huge reflection of himself and like how he sees the world, things that are important to him and kind of his ideals. And so my first reaction was like, oh my gosh, this is my partner in like, like a tangible form. It was beautiful. I thought he was crazy for a lot of steps, but every single time he's created a plan or an idea, it has come out so perfectly and exactly as it should have. And so now it is just like a very comfortable, joyful place to live. We're gonna talk about the outside of my tiny house some. I did it very different than most people in the fact that I broke up the roof line as much as possible, but it wasn't without reason. When we first started the project, we just knew we wanted as much ceiling height as possible in the lofts. So we hand built the whole chassis, all steel worked it ourselves. The center's elevated, and that created an extra eight inches of ceiling height in those lofts. We did these decks out front. This deck and the deck over there are both on hinges and are all constructed from thin steel and aluminum. So one person can lift those up and those eyelets there pin into those latches up top so they don't have to be removed for moving or anything like that. This tiny house is about 37 feet long true eight foot wide for the floor pan. The eaves are hanging out a foot on either side. So it does make it 10 foot wide. You do need an oversized load permit, but no pilot cars and you can still move it yourself. I did a lot of research on that before I got started. 
If you tally it all up with the floor space inside and the two lofts that are located up there and up there, you yield almost about 500 square feet. And that's not including these decks and everything that fold up front and back that give you so much more extra usable space as well. So I made an access panel. So this is your plumbing shutoff. This is all the power for the full house right here. This is everything as far as utilities go. So this area is my mudroom to my tiny house. I work outside, so I come home dirty work boots every day, dirty work pants, wanted a place to shuck them off. So we built a little three foot deck with an extra, I believe it's two foot prow, maybe 18 inches, to provide a nice big dry area to get undressed. We spiced it up with these really cool raw trees. And then all these railings are hand forged pieces that's all welded up in my shop just to give it kind of that more natural flowy feel to kind of look like it's growing. This door handle is one of my favorite pieces. I traveled a lot before I started building this and still do, but I made a point to find lots of little novelties like this. This one actually came out of an antique shop in Egypt and is a cool hand kind of holding what I imagine to be a crystal ball. And it's just those little flares are the things that really make this piece what I love. Come on inside, I'll show you around. So we're in the living room of my tiny house now and I wanted to tell you guys some about this door. When we started the house, we knew we wanted it to be easy to access and we wanted to have actual pieces of furniture that we could rearrange and adjust and we wanted to be able to get them in easily. We decided to go with the seven foot circular hobbit door. We wanted some challenge in building it and I had always wanted to do one quite frankly. So this is all constructed out of box tube steel and insulated and then has plain fur that's stained on the outside and birch plywood on the inside. Um, the door latches here are all machined and handmade and accept actual uh, skeleton key hardware for all the locks and everything. This door here will unpin like that and then swing open to full width as well. So you have a full broad view on a summer day and everything. The idea was with the glass windows like that and the Hobbit door open like this, it kind of alleviates that feeling of only having a true eight foot width for your entire house. So it really made things more spacious in here and kind of made it feel a lot bigger than it actually is. We knew we wanted some different furniture and not anything just new. We found some cool 70s pieces and we're constantly still kind of changing and upgrading as we go. So this is kind of the quote entertainment area of our whole tiny house. So we got the TV here that's mounted on a swivel. We wanted it to be that way so you can actually pivot it and watch it from the kitchen while you're cooking dinner if you want or watch it from the living room or this was the real intended area that you'd sit down and view it from. We did a small shelf that you can have your DVD players and stuff like that on. It's some really cool wormwood we reclaimed off a of buddy's property and he actually milled up a piece for me and kind of donated that for this project. Got a small heater below. We do have a heat pump that's our primary heat source, but this is the auxiliary and kind of helps the whole house just stay at a nice stable temperature everywhere in it. One interesting thing about this house is there's actually three entrances and three full decks. This area here is kind of the most purposeful seating area in the house or so it was supposed to be. And it was kind of designed all around storage and function as well. There's a full size pull out drawer below. There's actually storage behind here. So if you have uh, room for all your brooms and mops and all that type of stuff can actually slip in behind and hide away. I run a recycling company and I come into lots of interesting pieces like these lights throughout the day and even these cool brackets here were part of a casted Christmas tree stand. So as I go through my day and I see really cool stuff like this, it's either on its way to getting recycled or getting picked up from someone's house, I'll collect it and store it in spots where I know that I might have a use for it. These lights are kind of an interesting piece. They're actually out of an old naval ship and they're real solid brass blast proof lights that were all kind of navel wired. So I had to disassemble those and just convert them over to standard house wiring and bulbs and everything, but they were cool enough pieces. It was really worth putting some effort into to making them all fit in the house. So this ladder is kind of one of the more abstract pieces in the house. We didn't want the ladder to impose into the living room any more than it had to. 
I run a recycling company by day, so I'm able to get a hold of a lot of these wild materials like this reclaimed jungle gym piece and even this plate steel up here is reclaimed out of stuff I've collected. The pipe is actually oddly enough all water pipe and metal is kind of my material of choice. so. It was a little easier to do that for me, as crazy as that may sound. And it also clears the view from this bench to the television was a lot of the reason it has this curvature to it. We tangled it all together up here the way we did so that you can actually hang hammocks off it sturdily. And there's another hook on that side of the house that matches it as well. So if you position them right, you can get three hammocks total in the living room as of now. So now we're up in the main guest loft. It kind of has yet to be finished. This was always intended as just a guest bedroom area if it ever needed to be, and that occasion hasn't arose yet. And this loft is really cool because it cantilevers out over the full back porch. So we're able to actually fit a whole king size bed up here with room around it. This is an old reclaimed furnace vent from a house that I found, and they don't normally work on edge like that, so I had to file everything down and get it to work right. But in the future, this will have a curtain that blocks it off, and the idea is I wanted the guests to have a peep hole down below so they could kind of see if someone was in the kitchen or down there using the bathroom or what they were doing. And so when you twist it this way, it closes it, and when you twist the center this way, it opens it. It actually works really smooth and flawlessly, but that was not by accident at this point, so. <laughs> Now we're in the kitchen. As you can see, it actually is quite spacious as far as a tiny house goes and for having as many functions and appliances as it does. All the plumbing and function had to be in this area of the house and we knew that. So that's why the toilet's there and the shower's there and the washer dryer's here and the sink's here. And it really is a lot. We were able to get away with that by making the counter space actually sitting in what would be the living room floor pan. The sink was another piece that came into my store. A guy came in and had this sitting in the back of his concrete trailer all covered and dirty. And he wasn't willing to just recycle it, but he said he'd sell it to me for 50 bucks. I was having troubles finding the old style faucets that worked for me when I did, they were very expensive. So I soldered all this myself, first time I ever soldered. It was quite difficult, it took me a while to get it right. This was actually gotten out of my girlfriend Emma's house. She was staying at a farmhouse at the time and they told us we could have anything that was stored around the house and we found that in the basement. And it just made a really nice storage container for the forks and knives and spoons to all be separate. And then I drilled holes in the bottom so it actually all drains. So you don't have to have a dish strainer for your silverware. You can just rinse them, put them in there. Everything drains right off. The cabinet doors are also another hand constructed thing. I even made the hinges out of half inch box tube and then welded weld on hinges into it all. And this is all reclaimed beadboard that was re-sanded. And then this is the same material we did the trim out of, which is all rough sawn fur that I got off a mill site. I spent the extra time doing all this because I really wanted everything in here to be handmade. And I really wanted every place you looked to have something peculiar about it. Like even this board right here, we specifically picked one full of wormholes just because we wanted something that everywhere you looked, you could find something to be excited about. Even down to the paper towel holders, we could have just bought a generic one. We didn't want to. I actually hand forged all of this. So this tiny house actually has two lofts and a master bedroom. The first loft we already covered is for a guest bedroom, but this one was completely for storage. And we wanted it to be easily accessible from either side so stuff didn't really get stuck up there. So there's two ladders to access it. Both of them are kind of abstract. This one on this side starts by using these two steps on the counters, and then the rest of it is all this bent stainless steel rod. And we added this handle here that doubles as a tie-in spot for the hammocks over there to make it a little bit easier to actually climb up and in. And this loft up here is actually 10 feet long and eight feet wide, so it adds another 80 square feet to the house and has a lot of function to it. So this ladder was done this way, so it will flip out of the way and provide clearance when you go down while still folding down and uh, being totally functional when you need to go access your stuff.
When you have a tiny house, it's equally as important that it's functional, at least it was to me, and equally comfortable to a standard house. So we spent a lot of time making it so we were able to get full-size appliances in here. So this stove along with the Instahot and a lot of the other appliances, the dryer in the house are all propane. This is a 110 fridge, but a very efficient one at that. The whole house really will run off 30 amps, even though it's wired for 50. So now I'm gonna show you guys the bathroom. A lot of people don't even notice it at first because it is so well hidden in kind of this functional area of the house here. We utilize barn pocket doors that share this common area when they're open to keep everything really tidy and not taking up a lot of space. We reused the 80s Kohler sky blue toilet and completely replumbed and reworked that to make it a full brand new unit with a 80s vibe. So one of the reasons this ended up broken up the way it did was because when you have a gooseneck trailer that has an upper and a lower deck, you need some connection point of sheer strength in it. So what we were able to do is build a steel structural truss from the upper to lower deck in there. You can hear my welding slag inside of it still. And we were able to sheet it all with plate metal and solid weld it all together to make an actual steel truss in there. And while we had it that way, we figured we might as well capitalize off the space. So we mounted the breaker panel in right there so it could all be accessed from the back side. So it made the logical decision to put the toilet on one side and the shower on the other. The shower is really one of my favorite places on this house. There's a tremendous amount of work into it and just into how these doors work as well. We built all our own guides that hold the doors in and we even did copper flashing so it won't rub on there. And the reasoning behind that is because we made this Teflon slider on the inside. So the door actually creates a seal as it goes across there for all the water to run back in. And because the shower was a completely custom size for this compartment, it was too hard to get a pan. I didn't like the look of for my like, uh, I didn't want to do anything plasticky looking and cheap. It didn't really go with the rest of the house. So on one of my recycling pickups, I actually found these sheets of stainless steel. Once I had the fabrication company bend them to an exact 90 to my dimensions, I had to make them slip over each other. So I cut the bottoms of them, tapered them in, and then welded them all. And then the window case is all sealed up with copper with silicone beneath it. And it's all 100% sealed and solid. And then for a finish, we just ran a DA sander over it. That way, if it ever does start to get water build up or anything like that, you literally just bring a sander in here and give it a quick buzz and everything goes back to being fresh. So this fan's a really cool piece in the house along with this towel holder. It's more reclaimed stuff. And uh, so this fan is actually a vent air. It was made in Seattle, which is one of my favorite parts about it. And it has this cool switch style where when you open it, it comes on and when you close it, it shuts off. And this actually functions as a steam fan for the bathroom when you open the door and it vents for the stove as well when you're cooking, as well as just creating good circulation on a summer day. So it really just creates a very functional, nice, piece and this older stuff like this is my favorite because it's really built to last so it won't ever fail. So up here is the master bedroom with a queen size bed. It is cool that it's private because this door closes and has more hand built hardware pieces to that. This bed is simply on hinges with this ring so you just lift and it has a tie off point that you could tie it to the ceiling and it creates this whole vast storage area for your entire wardrobe. So this is one of the three entries and decks on the tiny house. It was more just to make the master bedroom feel bigger than it is and to kind of give it its own private walkout area. The idea was kind of on a summer morning, you could open a full wall and kind of have an open air, nice day with the birds chirping and all that. So I honestly built it as more of an art form. So when the time came to actually live in it, it was kind of surreal. I actually like living in it more than a big standard house. It's easier to maintain, easier to heat, easier to clean. You know, there's a sense of intimacy that comes with living in a small space. And I think we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. My friends that I haven't seen in a while that come over especially are, they're kind of always awestruck. Like you built this completely and why? And mm -hmm. it's just cause I wanted to.
Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.